Well, welcome back to Desktop Publishing with Quark Express. This is a series of uh, 52 uh, video tutorials going right the way through 2017. Uh, and today we're talking about super step and repeat. Now, uh, last week uh, I, I just showed you this feature. I, I think I might have, have, have botched it up a little bit, but I, I wanted to come back. Because uh, this is incredibly powerful and uh, it's, it's the kind of thing you find in powerful CAD CAM packages, but not very much in design and layout software. So uh, it, it's been in Quark for quite a few years now. Uh, and uh, every so often I get it out and play with it again. So let's look at the screen here. Um, uh, this is a, uh, a, a non-existent poster for a uh, non-existent flying school, Buxford Flying School. Buxford's a made-up place. But uh, if I could fly, humankind's greatest dream, yours for £60 an hour uh, at Buxford Flying School. If you actually run a flying school and want to use this poster, do give me a ring afterwards. But um, what you've got here is the image of the plane, um, and uh, uh, and you've got also um, you've you've got these these kind of like sub images of it, and when graphic time is limited, this is uh, quite an interesting technique to use uh, in order to get what you want to get to. Now, how have I done this? What are the steps? Well, the first thing is that. Um, I've turned the clipping on in this image. So uh, this image here, uh, which you can see on the left of the screen, let's just blow that up a little bit. Oops, now I'm turning it, didn't want to do that. So let's blow that up. This is an image which I've, I've in Capture One um, Pro, I've just uh, turned it into black and white uh, and turned the levels up to make it easier. But I don't need to go to any other software to do uh, a cutout of this uh, because Quark Express will do it quite happily. So um, I'm going to go down to item. Uh, I'm going to go down to the clipping in the measurements palette first. Item, no, I don't want, I want non-white areas. I'm going to set the threshold to 8%. Um, you, can, you can see that, that changing things. I'm going to make it 8%. Uh, I'm going to set the smoothness of the noise to zero because it's quite a clean image. And um, that's my clipping. Now, you might say, well, so what? You've clipped that. Uh, but I, I don't want a clipping image. You can still see it's a little bit um, uh, got stuff on it. I want, actually, to uh, go to item. Uh, so uh, up at the top here, item, new box from clipping. And as you can see, that's now auto-traced that image uh, in order that I can use it for something else. Now, it's not quite clean enough for me. So what I'm going to do is go to item merge or split paths. I'm going to do split outside paths. Um, and I just want to select those and delete those. Now, if I don't really like this, I can, in fact, work on it using uh, over here uh, on the left. I've got my uh, graphic tools and I can actually uh, work on those and, and maybe I would do uh, if this was anything but a demonstration but but for the demonstration that's going to be fine so let's now um, uh, that's now a vector graphic so it's not an image at all and that means I can recolor it any way I like um, let's get rid of these ones I've already done because uh, we've already done those um, and what we're going to do is we'll just, okay, I'm going to press F6 to lock that. I don't want to be moving it around. Um, and what I want to do now is create a graphic that echoes uh, the plane, but doesn't get in the way of it. And so to do this, I'm going to go to uh, item, super step and repeat. And this enables me to, to put in uh, a number of repeats. I'm going to have three repeats. I've got, I'm going to have four planes. An offset, uh, horizontal. Um, let's say we're going to do minus 10 millimeters. 
an offset vertical, we're going to do minus five millimeters, an angle, which is the change in angle, let's say that's going to be five, uh, we're just trying this out for now, um, and an end box shade, let's do that 20%, an end item scale, let's go and make that 20%. Uh, and we can also put a skew in. So let's put skew of 15. Let's see what happens. Okay, so um, as you can see, that that's, uh, might be fine for a wall poster, but that's, that's not what I'm after. It's, it's not rotating enough. It's not doing what I want. So let's, let's uh, come back from that and go back to super step and repeat. Um, so now let's make that angle uh, minus 20%. Um, again, the end box here, I've got to type these in again, will be 10%. The end box scale will be 10%. And the end item skew will say 15 uh, degrees. And we're going to make that, uh, well, we've got four things. Horizontally, that page is uh, 297 millimeters across. So let's divide that by four, uh, which is going to be about 75. Uh, we'll call that, uh, let's say we're going we're gonna to go 40. And we're going to go vertically, we're going to go, well, it's 21 centimetres uh, up and down. It's an A4 page. So 24 uh, divided by uh, 4, uh, uh, sorry, 21 divided by 4 is going to be um, about 5.5. So let's, let's, um, let's make that 50 millimetres. Um, uh, actually, I've, of course, I put it in millimetres. I need centimetres there. So um, 40 centimetres, and that's too much. It's okay. Let's try this. No, I've, I've got that wrong. Um, yeah, it's millimeters I wanted, so let's try that again. Okay, now let's try that. So now we've got the magnificent men in their flying machine going up, 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 and down, up, down, down. And in fact, that particular spread of, of, of planes is quite pleasing, but it's not the one I want. So I, I can keep playing with this um, until I'm happy. And it is a bit of a playing around. Or I could just use it to create several instances at different skews, at different sizes, uh, and then to uh, work with that. Well, let's create a different layout. Um, and uh, this time I'm going to go and create uh, a... Uh, create a, a graphic using my uh, utilities. Uh, shape maker. So we talked about shape maker the other week. Uh, I'm going to go to shape maker. And I'm going to go and I'm going to do a rectangle. Oh, let's let's um, let's make that a beveled rectangle. In fact, let, let's make that different on each side. Um, uh, um, concave, um, twenty-five, uh, rounded, or concave. Uh, 50, and this is a bit like a piece of cheese eaten by a mouse. Um, and we'll make that pointed uh, uh, 22. And, and that's just a, a kind of bizarre shape. It, it offers me a text box. I'm going to have a nun box. I just want to play with the color now. And uh, we'll make that cyan. And uh, let's uh, also give that a frame, which is going to be uh, let's say uh, that color and what we're going to do now in fact we'll make that even a, a, a magenta frame what we're going to do now is just create a sort of abstract pattern by uh, again item uh, super step and repeat and you can see I can I can s turn this um, around anywhere or I can even pick a point to rotate it around that with the one at the bottom so uh, we're going to do this as a, as a center thing. Uh, we're going to make the end box shade zero. Uh, we're going to make the end box scale uh, 20. We're going to make the end frame width 15. And we're going to make the end, and we're going to have 15 things. And we're going to have to make this basically uh, three and three. Otherwise, with 15, it's going to go off the page. And we'll then put, uh, say, seven degrees in there. Uh, and let's see what happens. Uh, and there you have an odd thing. Let's, let's do that now with the um, opacity of that, of that border, much less. 
uh, and we'll do the same thing again. So item super step and repeat. I'm going to put 15 in, 3, 3, make that 7. It retains some of the things. Make the end frame width. We'll actually make that 1 now. Um, and uh, the end box shade is uh, 10. And the end item scale is, uh, um, let's say, 130, 140. Um, and look at that. Isn't that, isn't that quite nice? Uh, lots of things you can do here. Super step and repeat does all kinds of interesting things. It also does some very mundane things. So um, imagine if I've got uh, a box and uh, that box is uh, 15, uh, it's 45 millimeters high uh, and I want to have a grid of boxes. Well, uh, super step and repeat. Um, repeat counts for uh, the vertical offset is going to be a horizontal offset is going to be zero, vertical offset 50, um, bang. And now suddenly I've got all those boxes. Uh, we'll give them a color so we can just make them easier to look at. And again, uh, super step and repeat. Um, vertical offset now is going to be zero, horizontal offset is going to be 50, uh, and off we go. And uh, just in a moment we've created a grid which we can use quite easily. You can create that other ways, but I hope that's introduced you to the power of super step and repeat. It's one of my favorite hidden functions in Quark Express, and I hope you uh, enjoy playing with it. My name is Martin Turner. Thank you very much for watching. This is Desktop Publishing with Quark Express. Uh, you can get the book uh, from Amazon uh, or from your local bookstore, and I look forward to seeing you again. Bye.